This is a reading from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 20. Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, gasping for breath. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left immediately for the tomb. They ran, neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter. Stooping to look in, he saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed the linen cloth lying there, and the kerchief used to cover his head, not lying with it. The linen cloth, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, took one look at the evidence, and believed. No one yet knew the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples went back home. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there, dressed in white, one at the head, the other at the foot of where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her, Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Sir, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for him. Jesus said, Mary, turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabbani, meaning teacher. Jesus said, Don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the other disciples. I saw the Master, and she told them everything he said to her. Love Overcame Love overcame, emerging from a cold tomb, all the truth, majesty, and creativity of a living God, transforming a broken heart, making a quiet return in a still and sorrowful garden. The gravestone rolled away to release redemptive love. Jesus resurrected and restored, comforts a weeping woman, speaks with travelers on a journey, meets with his faithful friends, and they bow down before Christ alive, and acknowledge that the Savior has arrived, that the Word of God has come alive and that the extraordinary transformation of heaven and earth is complete. Julie Palmer The story you just heard from the Gospel of John is the story of one of the first resurrection experiences. One of Jesus' followers uh, going to the tomb, realizing the tomb is empty, and then Jesus to appear to her. And it ends with that famous line, I have seen the Lord, and all at once everything seems to change. One of the very next resurrection experiences for Jesus' followers occurred on a beach not too dissimilar from the one right here. They knew something was different. They had heard the stories of the empty tomb. They had heard stories of the resurrected Jesus to some of the members of their group. And it's at a place like this, on a beach, by a fire, that Jesus appears to a group of his disciples. And they are changed. They are transformed. They know now that they must also proclaim the risen Lord, and hope springs anew. Now earlier in my talk, I discussed the story of Archbishop Romero, but I didn't finish the story. One of the things that Archbishop Romero said to the Salvadoran people is that if he died, that he would rise again in the voice of the Salvadoran people. In 1999, when I went to El Salvador, it was during the commemoration of Romero's death on March 24th, and each year they have a march through the streets in San Salvador. And one of the practices that the Salvadoran people do is they declare the names of the martyrs of the cause for justice in El Salvador. And as the names are declared, the people yell out, Presente, present, present, alive. And I saw that firsthand and the power and the impact of that. 
And it is very true that even with Archbishop Romero, in one sense, he is alive in the Salvador people. And every time his name is proclaimed, they respond with the phrase, presente. He is present and he is alive. You see, Easter is the counterpoint, the response to Good Friday. Hope and love conquer despair and hatred. Music is in a major key and sung with joy. The snap is reversed and Thanos is defeated. Mandela is freed and apartheid is dismantled. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission is formed in Canada with the 95 calls to action. Even now, we see the arrival of spring and with it the hope that comes from vaccinations. Movements such as Occupy Wall Street, Me Too, and anti-racism rallies come with a desire for a new world where equity and justice are found again. Now let me be clear, this is not some Pollyanna optimism. South Africa and Canada, indeed so many countries around the world, still grapple with systemic injustices. Post-pandemic life will bring a new normal, but we cannot go back. Our economic systems are broken and need to be fixed to address the income inequality and the ex existential threat of climate change. Systemic injustices, injustices still occur in regards to gender and race and need to be addressed. But Easter reminds us that there is hope. Jesus is risen, love wins, with God nothing is impossible. Here at Appleby we have a tradition known as flowering the cross. For me there is no greater symbol of the juxtaposition of Holy Week and Easter. The cross was a symbol of power and domination for the Roman Empire. It was a way of reminding all who opposed empire that would follow to a path of destruction. Flowering the cross is a symbolic gesture of turning an instrument of destruction into a thing of beauty. In a sense, the story of Holy Week and Easter is no different from this year's chapel theme of disrupting and inviting. We are called to disrupt the systems of power and domination and replace them with communities of justice, equity, love and compassion. The way forward may still not fully be defined but it is a path that is filled with hope, beauty, and love. Easter is a call to follow that path. Draw us forth, God of all creation. Draw us forward and away from limited certainty into the immense world of your love. Give us the capacity to even for a moment taste the richness of the feast you give us. Give us the peace to live with uncertainty and questions with doubts. Help us to experience the resurrection anew with open wonder and an increasing ability to see you in the people of Easter. Amen. <laughs>